first and say, uh, I um sorry, Clara, thank you for taking a little bit of time to talk about the series. Um, I absolutely love what you guys did with the score, and and I was surprised obviously what I saw with the series. And congratulations, um, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So yep. this is one of the rarest times that we get to talk to filmmakers after the projects have been released, which I absolutely love when we get this chance because we get to talk about what we expected and what we finally saw. So I think my first question before diving into what you guys did with the score is, now that the series is out, did you get a chance to see it completely and what were your expectations uh, from it? Uh, answer you first. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, the week that it came out, we, every <laughs> evening we would watch the episodes as they would come out and, you know, working on the show for, we worked on it for almost two years, I guess, a little less. Mm -hmm. So then finally being able to see it all rendered with the final mixes of our music, uh, David, Sir David Attenborough's voice, it was mm -hmm. very humbling and inspiring, you know, like we, we've always been fans of Sir, Sir David watching all the Planet Earth series and then, you know, hearing his voice over our music. Uh, was incredible yeah does he want to add Kara? yeah i mean like anshe was saying working on it for two years you don't really get the full picture because a lot of times the the artists weren't done and the cgi wasn't obviously fully rendered so we kind of had to use our imagination a little bit um throughout the process and then seeing it on the big screen and what they came up with is really remarkable so um when when they reached out to you guys for the project um did they gave you the whole picture because uh, we're working with dinosaurs here they're not alive so we're working with prehistoric animals we are trying to recreate their story and tell the story did, did how much did you knew of the project when coming into how it's going to be presented uh, answer you first so um we had spotting sessions with the directors uh, and the showrunner Tim Walker uh, for each specific episode. Sometimes we would even like, you know, talk with them multiple times. Um, and the first versions of the episodes that we would get, they would already have some animatics and storyboards and, you know, maybe just a little box with a like mock animation. But the, the main thing is that the story arc never changed uh, throughout the episodes. So um, it was so important for us to really listen to the directors and listening to what they wanted the story of, you know, the dromaeosaurs and the hadrosaurs and ice worlds, like how the story arc goes. So when we did the first version of our music, even though that after that they um, redid some animations and recut the sequence and we had to recut the music to the new picture, the story arc never changed. So um, yeah, the spotting sessions were key here. Carol, something you want to add? No, that was, <laughs> that's basically it. <laughs> um, I'm going to fanboy a little bit here because I'm a fan of dinosaurs and I'm a fan of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. And, and, and it's fitting that the series came out as, you know, a week later, the, the movie is the last, the last movie to the trilogy uh, comes out. So you, you, you have to like, you, you see both sides of the story and, and you, you see how um, technology has evolved and how right now we can just see those dinosaurs that they were real, just walking right, right through us. How, how excited were you? Are you a fan of dinosaurs? Are you excited for or the concept of dinosaurs, of the idea of dinosaurs? Uh, and how excited were you guys coming into the project thinking of the magnitude of technology behind it? Yeah, well, there's a lot of things to be excited about. First and foremost, um, Bleeding Fingers has a relationship with the BBC, and they've been working together on many of these nature documentaries for years now. And that's something that Anshe and I always wanted to do, was work with the BBC and on one of these awesome nature shows. And then on top of it, you find out that it's about dinosaurs, which is a topic that everyone loves and is interested in and then we're like double excited for that fact so yeah it's really a dream come true 
Yeah, I, and I was always, I've always been a dinosaur nerd and fan. I, I have a little uh, scar here on my eye. It's, you probably can't see it on the camera, but... He was attacked by a dinosaur. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's very old. No, but uh, uh, in in I say I say was the kid on Jurassic Park that 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 was uh, Ian was planning how. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but the scar uh, it, it's from 1994, I think, when Jurassic Park came out, if I if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in preschool, and all of me and my friends were all you know flipping out because of Jurassic Park. So we played dinosaurs and I was always designated to be the velociraptor hunting my friends down. So one time, like my, my friend was, um, I was chasing him and I ran into a fence. <laughs> so I still, I still hold the scar of the, my velociraptor days. <laughs> That's um, but yeah, I, I've, I've always been a dinosaur fan. So like, Doing this is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Let's dive into the music. I, I, what you guys did, it was amazing. And I absolutely love because you can see the tones were, you know, what they need to be intensified uh, when you're seeing a difficult situation being presented. And then you'll see the, melod the, the melodic uh, soft tones when something peaceful or beautiful is going on. How, does, how, do we, how do we start going through it? Who do you work with directly? I work with directly in order to, for you to have an idea, okay, this goes here, this goes there. How do we start, you know, scoring a series like this one? Well, um, it does start with the spotting session. So that's when we get on Zoom for this instance with um, Tim Walker, the series producer and all the directors, because there's one or maybe two directors sometimes per episode, usually one in this mm -hmm. case. and they are the ones that have the initial vision of what they're looking for in that sequence. So we would go through every episode, each sequence, and maybe we'd talk about what the temp track is doing right or what it's doing incorrectly and which direction they want to take it from there. And, um, you know, we really focus on the storyline. So we don't talk so much in musical terms, but a lot in emotions and story and mm -hmm. that's how how the idea is initially born and then we'd go back and forth with Hans and Russell and that's how the ideas really come to life. So you want to add? Uh, no I, I that's exactly what I wanted to say like that we we try not to talk music with the directors you talk emotions and you talk story yeah and our job as composers is to translate that into music and enhance it um because you know the scenes could turn out completely differently. I don't know the T Rex and turtle scene. Like there's a T Rex killing a turtle. Basically, the music is comedic because you want it to be cute. Yeah. But like if we would have put sinister music, like it would be a completely different story there. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned hands, but I'm gonna talk about that later. I want to talk about making this uh, feel unique. And it's, I know a lot of people, a lot of kids watch this series because kids love dinosaurs, but uh, it's important, you just mentioned it yourself, having mm -hmm. a balance between of emotions throughout the whole series and you guys did great. But how, who do you find, who do you go for inspiration? Who do you, when, you, when, you have, when you're in a specific scene and you're, you're being told to do this, how, how do you get yourself in the zone? And who do you challenge in order to get that uh, specific tone or that specific sound that you want to go uh, for? Answer, answer you, you first. I mean, in, inspiration, it's like this, um, uh, what's, it's, it's a weird word. And it, 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 we perceive it differently as composers through time. So, um, you know, we write music every day. Um, and what we get inspired by is what's on our screen. So here we got inspired by the stories. When, when we write, for me personally, I think for Kara it's, it's the same. When we, we're, when we are in the writing like weeks, we tend not to listen to music. Like the only music we would really hear is the temp track and we like to listen to it once and then never again. So um, it has to come from like an inner part of you 
and your ability to ex to express the emotions you want to express and your technical ability and it has to come in within within without external factors interfering too much um and of course you know it's we go through lives there's we listen to music we we have our favorite composers favorite films all of that combined is kind of in our head all the time whether we like it or not you know yeah but i think specifically for this score um we really wanted to have a unique and otherworldly sound so that's where the instruments that we built uh came into play because that that's a big part of our inspiration for the score was yeah. making our own sounds and utilizing them i, I mean I the story that we can we can say is a uh, uh, kind of the moment where we really realized oh we have something special is we took a trip to arizona uh, to um and visited some dinosaur related sites like the meteor crater and and the footprint site i forgot what it's called right now and uh, um petrified uh petrified forest, petrified, forest. Uh, mm -hmm. forest national park mm -hmm. and in sedona we stumbled upon a um a native american trading post and it was basically a we found a room that was meant for arts and crafts and it has just it has just tons of bones and fossils and rocks and native american instruments and then we saw that and we we're like oh instruments bones mm -hmm. fossils that's what we can study from dinosaurs why don't we take these materials and try to create unique instruments so that's how that's when we kind of knew oh maybe we have something really special that we can work with yeah you jump into my next question because i wanted to ask about your instruments because i i, I mean I, this to me feels something that's really modern now uh, comes posters you know building their own things in order to create recreate that sound um the, it, it was all you guys that, or was there any synthesizing going on or any anything uh, samples that you uh, or at least taken in order to create something or was it all organic um it, it was a big combo of all that stuff so we recorded um an 80 piece orchestra the national bbc orchestra of wales Mm -hmm. and something <laughs> i don't know if that's the right yeah, order <laughs> i think it is yeah. i always mess it up uh but that combined with our um instruments that we built and we have some stuff that were samples but most of it got replaced in the end um aside from any custom built libraries that we made uh and we also recorded some amazing instrumentalists from around the world one that comes to mind is gorkum sen He's a musician in Turkey and he's built the Yabahar and that instrument is layered with the orchestra very frequently throughout the score. And so you so we try the, the orchestra is always like creates the atmosphere. Everyone's used to the orchestra. It's mm -hmm. kind of, mm -hmm. it's hard to even portray some sort of emotions without the orchestra. Um, so that's kind of like the atmosphere. And then the instruments that we created that is what transports the listener back in time. It, it creates the otherworldly feeling or portrays certain characters. Um, yeah, so that, that combined is then the sound that we have. Uh, two more questions before I let you go. If we compared past projects that you have worked, you guys worked on with this one, what did you took from the other past projects to this one or what were the challenges that you, you 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 just saw what you you present but they were presented to your the, the two of you. Mm, can I start? Mm. Um, so I uh, I worked as an additional writer on Seven Worlds One Planet with Jacob Shea, and that was a huge learning curve for me um, in scoring natural history. And before that, I I scored a few other natural history shows, but you know never never a show on this magnitude. Um, so it's it's a big learning curve to to reach like kind of the efficiency of scoring that is required to score these shows because it's a lot of music it's it's music that's very um what's the word i'm uh looking for help me out it's uh there's there's a 
not time consuming. It's uh, it has a lot of layers, uh -huh. and you, you the you have to have the ability to shift from one emotion to another emotion, from one instrumentation to another instrumentation very fast and make it seem seamless and smooth as like one coherent piece of music. And the other like task we had that we enjoyed tremendously is collaborating with each other and with Hans. So for like the coasts uh, episode, the um, the hatchlings, the alicones versus Bosco Draco scene, if you remember, where they try to reach the forest and it's a 10 minute sequence. And we were passing those 10 minutes between each other. I think it, it's five shifts where I did a section, Kara did a section. And then I would play on Kara's section, Kara would work on my section. And when you listen back to the 10 minutes, it seems like one person created it. Mm -hmm. it, it you can't really realize who did what you know um i went a bit off the loop here on this, on this question <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh I'll, i would say that out of any genre of of scoring for media and i might get grief for that from my colleagues but i think natural history scoring is probably the toughest mm -hmm. so do you want to add Kara? no i would definitely agree with them it's um it's very it's a daunting task because you're you're dealing with you know characters that aren't speaking and you have to portray certain emotions based on you know what the directors are telling you and what the narration is saying um, while trying not to interfere with you know important sound effects and sound design so it's really this marriage of those things to you know tell the story the way that the directors envisioned it and i think that's the biggest challenge but also the biggest reward at the end is seeing the whole thing come together yeah and, and only one more thing if i can add also music plays such a huge role in, in natural history documentaries it's almost like people expect the score to be good <laughs> um in, in maybe some TV series or, or films, the music is really backing and it's just enhancing the emotion. Here you kind of have to enhance it and also be able to sing while doing it. In certain moments, you can sing more, certain moments you can sing less. Um, but music is like, it, it takes almost not a lead role, the characters are always the lead role, but if David, it's for Sir David is not speaking, the music is the one telling the story. Yeah, I mean, Mononychus or what was another like really cute <laughs> dinosaur, um, the Therizinosaurus. These characters, you know, people we are reading reviews and they're talking about, oh, they're so cute. Like, we're, they're such like dear characters in this show. And, and I think the music, aside from them being amazingly rendered and just adorable, I think the music helps helps them feel that way. Or, or another another scene that uh, came to mind, and I hope I can pronounce the dinosaur name correctly <laughs> because I can, I can never do it. Uh, uh, Dino Chirus, Dino Chirus, the the um, platypus looking character. Ah, from yeah, Fruit yeah. Water. Oh yeah, everyone loves and, him, <laughs> and he's just scratching himself. Yeah. And, yeah. The music is like kind of epic and we did like this epic blues with our custom cellos and stuff and um imagine looking at that scene without the music it would it would be him just scratching at a tree and now yeah i mean the, it, yeah. it would still look cool but, it would still look cool but, but the music is the thing that's gonna make you feel oh he's so funny and adorable <laughs> you know yeah, I mean, I mean, I think you guys, both of you nailed it. And and, and uh, the music, I mean, I, obviously for this type of project, music is really important. It, it gives the tension when tension is needed. It gives emotions when emotions are needed. I think the two of you did great. And and it worked throughout the whole season. I think that was, I mean, I, I love watching documentaries and, 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 and I agree with you, the guys said the music is really important. But when it comes to nature and, and, and dealing with dinosaurs that, they're not alive so we have no clue how they you know they we we can uh how they how they their emotions are hard they are going to react to everything so i think you guys they're great we continue to mention han and i gotta ask because i'm a huge fan of his i think uh, any composer you know 
needs to know who Hans Zimmer is. If you know who Hans Zimmer is, go Google it. Come on. I mean, you're, well, you're living under a rock. Um, working with him, uh, talk a little bit about your experience and what did, did you learn? Were you able to grasp anything from him that you know you think, oh, I'm going to take this. I'm going to from now on, I'm going to something, something that I'm going to uh, look for and, and, and adapt. Um, Kara, to for your first. Well, yeah, we're both huge fans of Hans, obviously, and it's been an honor to be able to collaborate with, you know, one of the world's greatest composers. Um, it, you know, it's, we would, yeah, go ahead. It's a, it's it's always like such a collaborative environment that Hans and Russ created here at Bleeding Fingers Music, you know. Yeah. Um, and the same goes for this project. So after like all the spotting sessions, we would meet with Russ and Hans, uh, Russ Emanuel, Russell Emanuel, our score producer and CEO of Bleeding Fingers, uh, and you know brainstorm ideas, watch the sequences together. Um, before so before even we would write a note, you know there would be always some brainstorming and uh, inputs from Hans and Russ and um, and he's just a, such a great storyteller he's been his career is so vast and just sometimes just some little inputs help so much like i don't know i, I can't uh he would just say something very small and it would change the whole scene you know yeah um so yeah it's very humbling you know to create this score with complete legends sir david Attenborough, john favreau hans zimmer uh, and we're here at the beginning of our career, really. <laughs> well, we're in the middle. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I want to thank the two of you once again for your time. It was a lovely, this was a lovely chat. I, I really was excited to talk about the, the two of you. And I think, again, composers are, to me, filmmakers. And I think everybody's like, we all want to talk to the actors and whoever's the star. But I'm some, some me, myself, when it comes to doing this type of interview, I always want to talk to directors and producers and people that make this work and make this, um, um, this whole uh, thing shine. So I want to thank the two of you once again for, for your time. Congratulations. And I hopefully uh, we can get to see more, uh, could, uh, listen more of you guys. I mean, uh, what you did was great. You know, working with your own instruments that's something to, that to me right now is something really modern. And we see it with the Mandalorian, how he, he built the whole, the whole, he all scored. So congratulations once again, and thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Nice to talk to you. We can send you some pictures of the instruments if you, if you wish. That will be good for their video part. So thank you. We'll, we'll, okay. that will work great. So thank you once again. Thank Thanks. you. Bye.